Okay, first up this morning, we are talking with the team behind King 5's new show airing Sunday nights that's taking a deeper look at racism in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. King 5's Joyce Taylor, Kristen Ayers, and Taylor Murph, Murph Fendereski explain. So Facing Race is a program really for everyone of all races, and it's an opportunity for people to learn more about uh, race and racism, profiling, policing, um, and all different kinds of issues around race that maybe they haven't been exposed to before or they want to learn more about. Uh, and it's also an opportunity to meet their neighbors, people who live right here in our Northwest community, who are people of color uh, and see them maybe in a way they haven't seen them before because they don't know very many people of color. Uh, but it's an opportunity for us to have some conversations and some difficult conversations too about the issues around race that I think are really top of mind right now across the country. Yeah, the notion of being uncomfortable is sort of a fundamental part of it, right? Because we can't have these conversations unless we can acknowledge that they're going to be uncomfortable. True. So we, we actually want to push that envelope of people being uncomfortable, but we also want them to be open to hearing, listening, and um, new ideas, to embrace new ideas that maybe they haven't before, to think even outside the box. You know, every, it seems in this day and age, everything seems to be so polarizing. Um, but what if we try to uh, see something from someone else's point of view? Kristen, how did this come to be? So obviously, uh, in the past several months, we saw the killing of George Floyd in the month of May and the number of protests that followed after that. Um, King Five has been at the forefront of having and addressing things that are happening, you know, not just in the Pacific Northwest or in Western Washington, but all over the country. And so it only made sense to sort of sit back and look at what some of the deeper issues are that we could uncover when it comes to talking about race. There's a lot of polling out there right now where people are trying to figure out things like what systemic racism is, what it means to be anti-racist. And it felt like we needed to kind of meet this moment and start talking about and trying to answer some of these questions that people all around us are asking and are sort of open to right now. And so, uh, you know, there was some talk with management about whether we should do something like a town hall or something like that. And that conversation just grew and grew. And we started looking back at a program that uh, King Five did back in the 60s and 70s as the civil rights movement was going on called Face to Face. It showed that King Five has been trying to have these conversations over the years in different ways, and it was time to revive that conversation, and that's really what Facing Race is. Fascinating, and also, I have to say, a little depressing that we still have to have some of these same fundamental conversations that we were having 50 years ago, but it's great that we are having them. And one of the things that I think is so great about this show and how you guys are putting it together is that it's really a mix of personal stories and um, professors and doctors and everyday people at the beach sort of weighing in and having these conversations. Taylor, how do you put all of this together? What does it take to actually produce this show? Well, I myself, I'm not doing it alone. We have reporters and a lot of people on this team who are contributing to um, telling these stories. But really, it's, it's a mixture of coming up with stories that will show people the frankly, hard reality of what it's like with racial injustice in our country today, but also picking stories that are solution oriented and move the conversation forward. So um, whether that be, you know, I recently did a story of an artist who is fighting racism through art and he had this innovative way uh, to make people have it click, you know, just to see uh, these lives lost by police in a different way. Um, and for him, that was a solution to having people not just become jaded to what we see in the headlines every day. And um, there are other stories we're working on where we're finding innovative ways that police are doing things um, in a lot of different areas where we can all take action in order to make our society uh, a more inclusive and equitable place. That uh, story about the artist is so good. If you guys haven't watched it yet, it's in episode two. Go back and watch that entire episode. The other thing that I think is so great about it is, Taylor, what you just said, trying to move things forward and go deeper than we have before. And Joyce, one of the things that I thought was so interesting is the sort of lessons that we're learning from watching these about the difference between 
overt racism and implicit bias or systemic racism, that these are all different things that might have similar um, consequences, but they are different things and people should recognize all of them as existing. You know, it's so true, and I'm glad that you bring up those different terms, because one of the things that we are providing on king5.com is this incredible resource guide. So whether people want to get their information online, uh, in books, in movies, if they need links to learn more about a particular aspect of inequity or social justice or racial inequities or policing or profiling or name something under the umbrella of race and equity. We have this incredible resource guide at king5.com slash facing race, where people can get that information. So if you want to know more about what are microaggressions, you can find out about what that is. If you want to understand what it means to be profiled or look at real statistics that will bear out that this is not just an idea or um, you know, something that's happening just possibly in the Northwest or in this police department, or maybe not that one, but we have statistics uh, and information that will support um, the stories that we are telling. And so I'm glad that you brought that up. But it's true, whatever it is that people are interested in learning, even if they're starting at the very beginning, maybe they haven't even ever had a conversation with someone about their experience, about what it means to be a person of color in this country, or to raise a son of color in this country, or to have that talk that we have with our kids about how to act if they're ever in an interaction with a police officer. They can go to king5.com and find information or resources for that. So now there's just no excuse for <laughs> someone to be ignorant about what's happening as it relates to race here in the Northwest. Our conversation with King 5's Facing Race team continues next with what surprised them about the response to this show so far.